I am genuinely concerned that I'm gonna forget something. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing my best of beauty for 2017. I wasn't sure if I was gonna film this, but I had everything picked out and I asked some of you guys and you said yes, so we're gonna do it. Uh, and this is probably gonna, I don't have like too much stuff, but I have, I have a bit. So we're just gonna jump right into it. So I'm gonna start off with skincare. This year for me in skincare has been kind of, I don't know, there really hasn't been that much that's changed my life. But I decided to pick the two things that re that have really, really made a huge difference for not only my skin, but also my makeup. First up, is pretty self-explanatory, uh, self pretty obvious. You guys have heard me rave about this a million times and it's the Tony Moly sheet masks. I think I discovered them at the beginning of this year. It might've even been like right before, but it's been this year that I've been using them regularly. They are so amazing. They're my favorite sheet mask. There of course are better ones, but they're far more expensive. When I first found these, they were really cheap. Like I could get a pack of like 11, I think, on Amazon for like $9. Haven't been able to do that for a really long time. For some reason, they're not, I haven't been able to find like that pack or seller or who, whatever, I don't know. But they are, I think three or $4 at Ulta. So they are still relatively affordable compared to most sheet masks, but they have definitely made the biggest difference in my skin. My skin just absolutely glows. I, get, I don't get any breakouts when I'm using these on a regular basis. Whenever I get out of the habit of using them regularly, that's when I start to notice my skin breaking out like crazy. So I have a lot, I owe a lot to these and they're affordable and incredible and amazing. So I highly recommend them if you're looking for a sheet mask. Um, next up is, I think they call it an eye mask. I don't know for sure. This is by Dermalogica. This is the stress positive eye lift, but basically this is the best, see they didn't call it an eye cream, but the best eye cream that I've ever used for like daytime, the best. It's super hydrating. Um, there's like a whole little massage thing that you're supposed to do when you get it. It comes with like a little pamphlet to show you how you're supposed to do it. But the applicator is really cooling. So you kind of like use it underneath your eyes and then over your eyes and it just depuffs and it hydrates and it's incredible. But I get really lazy. So I just kind of like apply it to a finger, to a finger, to my fingers and then just pat it underneath my eyes and it's still really cooling. But it's so hydrating and it makes my under eye makeup look absolutely flawless. Because I have really dark circles, I'm constantly using like a lot of product underneath there. And this just helps hydrate the skin and keep it from looking like crepey and dry and gross. And this is pretty much the only thing that actually does it. And I see my under eye looking horrendous when I don't use this. It's a forever favorite and I'm probably gonna be using it for the rest of my life. Highly recommend it. Okay, so this might shock some of you, but this is the first year that I actually started using Mac Fix Plus. I know everybody used it and I had used setting sprays, I'd used NYX, I'd used Kat Von D, I'd used um, Tarte, but this was the first time that I used Mac Fix Plus and it changed my life. It is just so good. First of all, I love the way it smells, like the original one, I love the way it smells. Uh, it's perfect for basically everything. It's really dewy. It's really good for if you have gone in with like way too many powders and you really need to set them into the skin. It's a great primer if your skin is feeling a little bit more dry. If you're on the oily side, you might wanna stay away from it unless you're using it to like create a really foiled effect with uh, a shadow or a pigment. It's excellent for that, but I love it. I use it for all kinds of things. I use it to rehydrate my makeup sponge. I use it to, like I said, apply pigments or foiled shadows. Uh, I use it to prep my skin. I use it to set my face. So it's really versatile and it's just absolutely inc incredible. And I can't believe that it took me so long to actually try it, but now I can't live without it. So Mac Fix Plus and now available at Ulta, which is awesome. It's like so much more accessible. Another Mac product is Studio Fix. This is another thing that I can't believe it took me so long to try because everyone has always loved Studio Fix fluid and I never tried it. I didn't even have any intention of buying it, but Mac sent me like a little gift card to pick this up and then like a couple primers and stuff. So I went to the Mac store, I picked one up. This is too dark for me right now. This is um NC20. <sighs> That's so sad that NC20 is too dark for me right now. It is so excellent. It's got SPF 15, which is great. That typically breaks me out in hives. Didn't happen. Fantastic. Uh, the color is maybe a little bit more on the orangey yellow side, you know, but I'm used to that and foundations never match me right away. It's so full coverage without being thick at all. It's really natural looking, but like I said, it just covers everything that you like don't want people to see. It's absolutely stunning. I love it so much. Since I got it, I've just been using this like crazy, especially when I have a tan. Never tried it and now it's like one of my absolute favorites. So highly recommend. Yeah, so that obviously didn't come out this year, but it's new to me this year. Those two things. I don't know, I don't know what took me so long. All right, and then the next foundation is kind of, I'm kind of slipping this in here because it's technically not even out yet, I don't think. But it's the Maybelline Superstay foundation, the 24 
24 hour super stay. I received this about a month or so ago, I think. And uh, I went to the opening thing for it. So we got it ahead of time and it is so amazing. And so I just kind of had to put it in here because I've already been using it for quite a little while. It's gonna be a 2018 foundation. I mean, I don't even know if it's out yet, but I just had to mention it. Like I just had to tell you guys that it is fantastic. It's probably one of the best drugstore foundations that I've ever used ever. It's, I would say that it's more of a medium coverage, but it's got a really natural look. It just makes your skin look really, really stunning. And you can also build it up in the areas that you need like a little bit more coverage. Sometimes I get lazy and I don't want to spot conceal. And I'll just kind of like after my first layer, I'll go in and I'll layer a little bit more in like, like I have some breakouts and I just kind of layer a little bit more in those areas. Uh, I'm wearing it today. I mix these two shades, probably like a pump of this and then like, a, I don't know, like a fourth of a pump of this uh, to get this color right here. And I love it. It is beautiful. So yeah, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I don't know, I've had it and I'm filming this and it'll probably go into, no, I would forget by the time I get to my 2018 favorites, I would forget that this even came out in 2018. Favorite. <laughs> Just telling you now, drugstore. For concealer, I mean, Tarte Shape Tape, I guess, was in my favorites last year because I really I really wanted to include it in this. I couldn't I couldn't include it again. Just, just know that it would be in this video. But the BH Cosmetics concealers came out and they're pretty damn good for like an affordable concealer. I've tried LA Girl, I've tried, there is not one drugstore concealer that I actually like, like not one. So this is as close as it gets. But these are the total coverage concealers. And one of the reasons that I, I don't like the, okay, this is embarrassing. That's really dirty. I don't really like the applicator at all. I kind of just like use a brush or my finger, but it is very full coverage. It's not too thick. It can be a little bit thick if you apply way too much. So you want to be kind of careful. I like to spritz my makeup sponge with a little bit of like a setting spray or Mac Fix Plus when I go to blend it out so that it doesn't end up being like really dry. But I kind of did, I do that with every concealer but it's so full coverage that you don't really need a lot. It's also affordable because it's BH Cosmetics and the best part about them is they have two shades. I think it's 111 and this one is 104. Very olive undertones, very olive. And that never happens. Concealer, foundation, never. So if you're olive and you're looking for a concealer, they have a really nice range. And they, they also have like a ton of them. I don't know how many colors, but from light to dark, so many different ones. So definitely recommend this if you're looking for something. It, it came close, came close to replacing my Tarte Shape Tape, close. All right, next up I have two products because I can't really pick between the two and they're similar. This is the Natasha Denona Sculpt and Glow Kit. This is really fantastic. Um, it has like a big ass mirror. You can see my really disgusting desk. We have a creams up here and then powders down here, which is really nice having both. And it also has this little guy right here. So it protects your creams because that's one of my biggest pet peeves. It's when you got creams and powders together. But the powder formula is so beautiful. It's so blendable. It's lightweight, it's not too thick, the colors are gorgeous, but I really do love the cream contours, my favorite. You can kind of see there's a difference between the colors. This one's got a little bit more red in it, not a big fan of that, but this contour color, the cream contour is, has a really nice like warmth. It's also cool enough to use as a contour and it's got some olive in it, which is perfect. That's what I need, but you can't beat the formula. You just can't beat it. I know Natasha Denona isn't cheap, but the packaging is beautiful. The mirror is fantastic and the formulas are delicious. I don't know what that sound is. But then similarly, the Kat Von D, okay, that sound? It's water hitting my air conditioner right now. We're gonna power through it. So Kat Von D came out with the cream contour shade and light, and I loved the shade and light palette. That was my favorite powder contour palette. So then she came out with the cream one. This is horrendously dirty, so ignore that. This is very similar. The color is kind of similar to that one and the formulas are beautiful. So I've kind of been going back and forth between those two palettes. That one's got the powders and the cream. So you've got like a nice combo there. This is just cream. I don't know if there's options, but both of them, gorgeous formulas, beautiful colors. I love them. That sound is really annoying. We're gonna talk about eyeshadow palettes. I really had to think about this one because I'll be honest, there weren't really that many eyeshadow palettes like when I was thinking about my favorites that stood out to me, but I figured it out. So first of all, I wanna talk about the Beach Cosmetics Zodiac palette. Now I haven't had it for too, too long and I've only been able to use it for like a couple looks, but I've gotta say the first time I used this, I knew that it was probably one of the best palettes out there. BH Cosmetics is super affordable. So that is like one of the biggest reasons, but just it's so visually pleasing. <laughs> It has this big ass highlighter right in the center, which you can obviously use as like an inner corner highlight, brow bone highlight, as a shadow. Uh, and then it's got all, all these beautiful matte shades. And what I love about the matte shades is that they're not obvious. We're ignoring that sound right now. It's pouring, <laughs> it's pouring in LA. This never happens, of course, the day that I film. So it has these absolutely gorgeous mattes and they're not like that, it's stunning. 
beautiful, incredible. I love it. I like the purple tones. They have a corresponding baked shade with a matte shade, but they're not exactly the same color. That always drives me nuts. I just think that it's so redundant. It's really beautiful. They have some duo chromes in here. The pigment is incredible. I don't usually like baked shades, but look at that. I mean, the pigmentation is absolutely incredible. This is really worth it. Really worth it. I think it's only $20. I think I have to double check, but if you are looking for a new palette, you want to experiment, experiment with a little bit of color, but you don't want to get like too crazy, I highly recommend this. Absolutely incredible. All right, so next up is the Anastasia Subculture palette. I know there was so much controversy about this palette. I mean, people were saying all kinds of things. They were saying that they couldn't blend with it, too much fallout, lots of kickback, blah, 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 whatever. Personally, I think that you as a makeup artist have to adjust yourself for the product. Like anyone can use anything as long as you have the skill. That's how I feel about it. So yeah, there is a bit of kickback and you could get fallout, but they're so pigmented, velvety and incredible. And personally, I found them very, very blendable. Uh, I did a tutorial with it and it was kind of like a, I think it was kind of like a first impressions as well. I think if I remember correctly, it was the first time I used it. Absolutely love them. I had, had no trouble. Uh, I love the versatility. First of all, this is the first Anastasia palette that I even own. Like palette, I have single shadows, but palette, they, none of them spoke to me. None of them spoke to me at all. The modern Renaissance, I was like, okay, we've seen it a million times, you know? I think the velvet is stunning. I love like the mossy green with the kind of gold yellow shade. Uh, then when you open it up, it's so visually pleasing. Like this was just fall in a palette. Uh, and she has so much variation here. You've got like beautiful warm tones, like different warm tones and then mossy greens and then like chocolate dark browns. And then this kind of like duochrome highlight, a couple of duochrome highlights. It's it's so, and then, I mean, that like bronze shade is, it's so perfect and endless looks. I'm actually gonna be using it again soon, I think in a tutorial. So <sighs> this rocked me. I don't know about you guys. I don't know. I know that it got like a lot of bad reviews, but personally, I think it's one of the best palettes for 2017. Now, if we're talking about super affordable drugstore, the Maybelline City Mini Palettes. These came out this year and they are so incredibly perfect. I usually hate tiny eyeshadow palettes, like they, I'm just not drawn to them, but when these came out, so Maybelline has really, they've upped their game, I think, completely. I think they're becoming the best drugstore brand out there because everything hits, like, hits the nail on the head everything. The pigmentation on these is really incredible. The colors that they chose, they have so many different ones. So you can create so many different looks. This is all shimmers. They have some with mattes. Uh, I love this green one, it's really beautiful. They have some really gorgeous shimmers and a matte shade in here. So it really offers like a lot of versatility. You have so many to choose from and they're affordable, they're Maybelline, you can get them at the drugstore. They're fantastic. I really think that as far as quality goes, they're just as good as the high end brands. All right, so next up we have highlighters. So obviously, obviously, Dose of Colors Fuego. Desi Katie collection had to be in here. This, I mean, first of all, when I saw the swatches of it and everything, it looked absolutely stunning, but I was really worried that it was gonna be way too dark. Uh, now granted, when I'm this, this is my natural skin tone, when I'm this fair, I can't use it as like a top of the cheekbone kind of highlight, but I can use it as an over cheek color or, or like a bronze or dusted on my temples kind of thing. And it is so beautiful. Uh, I'm pretty sure everybody knows by now how amazing this highlight is. This one is my go- when I have a tan, this is all I use, all I use. I just love this formula so much. I don't want to like use anything else. Plus the packaging, look at that. Amazing. Of course I had to go in here. As for drugstore highlighters, I have two. So Wet n Wild Mega Glow. This is in the shade Golden Flower Crown. You guys have seen this in a bunch of tutorials already. It's a beautiful pale gold shade. I use this when I have a tan and when I don't have a tan, so it's very versatile. It's got kind of a similar uh, formula to the Dose of Colors one. It's very lightweight, like it's not thick and foiled. That's kind of what I've been into. I like a more of a sheen on the skin now. This is really, really beautiful and I'm pretty sure it's like not even $5. Maybe it's $5, but it's so fantastic. From Maybelline, again, uh, is the Master Chrome Highlighters. I think it was the same event with the foundations. They came out with a couple of other shades. So this one is, what's called, Molten Rose Gold. And then this is the original, this is Molten Gold. The form, this, now this is foiled. Like this is an intense highlighter. Uh, it's a little bit darker than Golden Flower Crown. God, even just like picking it up. Yeah, it's slightly darker than Golden Flower Crown. Unfortunately, I mean, you can't really tell here, but it's too dark for me to use as a highlight pretty much all the time, unless I mix it with something a little bit lighter. But the formula is just so gorgeous. So it's really fantastic for like medium skin. They started coming out with new colors. I actually need them to come out with more because the formula is so gorgeous. So here's uh, the rose gold one is a little bit lighter. So that's really pretty. But the formula is just absolutely beautiful. They're really intense, but they're not like way too thick and they're maybe in their drugstore 
The colors are stunning. Uh, I have a few different lip products to talk about. I'm gonna talk about the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Pencil. This is in Iconic Nude. This is the most perfect nude lip pencil ever, in my personal opinion. I've been waiting to find something like this, something that would go with absolutely every nude lip that I tried. This is it, this is the only thing. I've been using this so much since I got it. It's gone down quite a bit. <laughs> so irritating. It's gone down, down quite a bit, uh, which is actually really sad, but it's like cool toned enough. I used it today. It's cool toned enough, but it's not too cool toned. Co co Cool toned. It doesn't look gray on the skin or anything like that. The formula is gorgeous. It glides. And then to go with that, the Nude Kate shade. This is the lipstick by Charlotte Tilbury. I think it's more of a cream, maybe a satin, but this is like oh, such a beautiful nude lipstick. So I've been wearing this combo since I got them. And I believe they were, I got them at the makeup show. I think it was the makeup show. Doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, this has been my, like my favorite nude lipstick. I almost said trio, duo. They go together beautifully. So since I was just talking about the Desi Katie collection, I might as well mention uh, Hot Fire and Sauvage. So these are the liquid lipsticks that came with, or that was in that, not set, collection. Okay, so Sauvage is obviously this gorgeous deep dark burgundy shade. Absolutely stunning. I love Dose of Colors liquid lipsticks. They're some of my absolute favorites. I actually have all my favorite nude lipsticks from Dose of Colors on display behind me. Well, you obviously can't see them, they're back there. But anyway, I had been waiting for an orange lipstick for such a long time and then Hot Fire came out and it was, perfection. It was exactly what I had been wanting. I love it. It's so beautiful. And then obviously Joseph Colors formula is fantastic. Packaging is beautiful. I love the matte nude with the gold. That collection just like shook everybody, obviously, when it came out. These are two of my absolute favorites. I also created an ombre look with them. I'll place it somewhere. So gorgeous together. So beautiful. I have so many collabs, I feel. My next one is I Love Set Ease. Uh, well, she did a collection, but this is a collab with Colourpop. So this is in the shade Arriba and it's like probably my favorite everyday red lipstick. It's like kind of more of a blue tone to it slightly. It's not like super warm, but it's not too cool toned in other words. I love it so much. It's so beautiful. Uh, Colourpop's formula is really nice too. It's like a little bit more liquidy and it's super easy to get it like nice and even. So this has become like one of my favorite reds. <sighs> Next up is Melt Cosmetics Death Cherry. I've worn this so many times. After I got it and I tried it, I couldn't stop wearing it. It was like my go-to red lip. So this is darker than Ariba um, and it's much more blue toned. Dark and yeah, it's got more blue in it. So it makes your teeth look super white. This is, the formula is probably one of my favorite liquid lipstick formulas out there. It's very velvety when you put it on. You can build it up if you really, really want to deepen the color and it doesn't crack or get super dry or look like cakey and gross. Death Cherry, fantastic, beautiful color, perfect. I love the applicator, it's really nice. It's got the nice precision, it's angled, it's just comfortable, it's fantastic, I love it. All right, so next up I wanna talk about the LC Cosmetics Velvet Sponge. It's like fairly new in 2017, but it is so fantastic, I absolutely love it. This was the year that I finally tried the Beauty Blender. I had never tried the Beauty Blender and I really like it, it's nice and lightweight. It definitely replaced my Real Techniques makeup sponge, but then I received this from LC, from LC. Mousy <laughs> Cosmetics. Uh, makeup by Lilith's. I absolutely love it. I think it's fantastic. It's a little bit more dense than the Beauty Blender. It's really big. Like when you get it wet, it's huge. It really grows. This one's actually kind of shrunk a little bit by now. But yeah, it gets huge. But this is my favorite. The point, it's not too pointy. It's not too thin. It's not too fat. It's perfect for doing your concealer underneath your eyes. So it's become my favorite sponge. Like I haven't used the Beauty Blender once since I got this. So... I highly recommend it. I think it's fantastic. They're firm enough, but they're not too firm. All right, so next up is the Tartiste Brow Gel. This is the clear brow gel. They have some colors. This is by Tarte Cosmetics, obviously, and it is the best, and I've talked about this a bunch of times, but this is the best brow gel that I've ever used, ever. It creates the effect for your brow hairs that people use soap, brow, soap for to do, soap brows that effect. It really holds up the hairs. It's the only brow gel for me that's ever done that because I have some stubborn hairs that kind of like like to fall down. This is the only one that's ever been able to hold them up. It looks so fantastic. It's lasted me forever too. I actually just got a new one just because I'm afraid of running out and not having the brow gel <laughs> to be able to use. Cause even on like no makeup days when I just throw a little something in my brows, maybe a little bit of concealer, I have to set them have to do it because it makes that big a difference. So if you're looking for a new brow gel, highly recommend it. As far as eyeliners this year, Maybelline 
has killed it yet again. These are the Master Precise Metallic Ink Liners. They have a bunch of different colors. And I feel like drugstore eyeliners, especially colored ones, they never have any pigmentation. Like they just don't do, they just don't do it, you know? But these ones are oh, amazing. Oh, I needed to shake that up more. I haven't used them in a while. <laughs> I didn't shake it up enough, so the green one is bleeding now. They're really pigmented. Like they have a lot of color and they're they're super shiny. They're really gorgeous. They work beautifully as an eyeliner. The applicator is really precise. It's nice and long and thin. And I think it's got kind of like a, I don't know if it's felt, I can't tell. I think it is felt, but it's very, very precise. I typically don't like felt tipped liners. These ones are fantastic. I absolutely love them. I think they're stunning. And again, they're Maybelline, so they're affordable. Oh, that gold one, look at that gold one. Oh. So pretty. That poor green one is bleeding. All right, I have a few more products. I'm gonna talk about fragrances and then I have a couple accessories. <laughs> All right, so as far as fragrances go for 2017, first up, I want to talk about MAC Shade Scents. I got these in a package from MAC and I immediately fell in love. First of all, I immediately fell in love with Candy Yum Yum. So delicious. It's obviously, it's really difficult to talk about scents in video, but oh, it's one of the most delicious things. If you have the opportunity to go to MAC, and smell it, please do. It's sweet without being like too sweet and it's floral and it's delicious. It's so feminine. Ugh, I love it so much, I love it. So this became my like obsession and I was wearing this basically every single day. And then I decided that I wanted to try something a little bit spicier. So I tried Lady Danger, which is delicious on its own. It's basically like spicy. That's how I would describe it. It's like a little bit more musky, but then I mixed them, both of them, so it was like, sweet and floral with a little bit of spice. And it was fantastic, like the best. And I can't tell you how many times I've received compliments. People are always asking me what perfume I'm, I'm wearing. And I have to explain that I like mixed two of them, but so good, best combo ever. But I love the MAC Shade scents. I think they're fantastic. And they're all inspired by their like most popular lipsticks. So Kenny Yum Yum, Lady Danger. I was gonna say Ruby Woo. One of them is Ruby Woo. And then another fragrance that I wanna talk about, and I know this is like a pretty recent development as well, is the KKW fragrance, what is this called? Crystal Gardenia, Crystal, Gar Crystal Gardenia. The sticker on this is so small, I can't read it. Crystal Gardenia Citrus. <laughs> I'm obsessed with these. I actually, I thought that I liked the original Crystal Gardenia better, but I think Citrus is it, man. I think it is. Well, I love the packaging. Oh, and it's so delicious. It's kind of like, has sort of the same idea as Candy Yum Yum, where it's like a little bit sweet and floral. I mean, it's obviously got the Gardenia, oh, but it's lighter than that. It's so good. It's delicious. I absolutely love it. I did a review of these if you want to hear more of my thoughts. But yeah, especially the packaging got me. Like when I saw the, the images for it, I was like, gardenia and it's a crystal? I'm down. I know a lot of people don't like the fact that it doesn't stand up. That doesn't bother me. Um, I didn't mention this in that video just because it literally didn't occur to me. I keep all of my perfumes laid down. Laid down? Yeah. In a drawer, so it doesn't matter. And if you want to have it on display, like it looks like a crystal, go ahead and lay it on your desk. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I think it's fantastic. I love it. And they're reasonably priced compared to a, a lot of the KKW beauty stuff. Oh, delicious. Mm. <sighs> okay, two more things. They're accessories and they changed my life. So <coughs> I'm joking on the perfume. So the first one that I want to talk about is, this is called Brush Folio, I think. The Brush Folio by Brush Folio. I talked about this in a current favorites, I think. Um, how do I open it? There we go. So it folds, it came folded like that. It's patent leather, right? So then you do this and then you just tighten that string thing and it holds all of your makeup brushes. I don't know how well you guys can see all the slots. They look, they look kind of dark there, but it's got all these slots. So you can put on display like all of your brushes, all of your eyeliners, and it just holds them all like that. You don't have to have them in like stupid little containers like this freaking thing that I use. It makes finding your brushes so much easier because it keeps them all like nice and laid out and flat. This is perfect for, actually, yeah, I talked about this, right? This is perfect for if you're a professional makeup artist and you have to be like on set because everything is all laid out. You can use it for eyeliners, lip liners, your brushes, everything. Um, I feel like I need a bunch of them though for all of my brushes and then all of my liners and everything, but it's fantastic. I absolutely love it. It's changed the game completely. I didn't use it today and I used, not that this is terrible, the BH brush holders are cute and everything, but it's just, you're constantly like digging, you know? It's really good. They have a few different sizes. That's the big one. I really like it. 
Obviously all of this stuff is gonna be listed down below so you guys don't have to go searching for it. Okay, and last up, I got this from Melt Cosmetics. I checked because sometimes they like create specific things, like special things to send to people, but they are selling this on their website. So it is available and it is, I think it's supposed to be for eyeliners or lip liners. Like I think that's why they sent it to me because they sent it to me with their liners. Um, but I'm using it for brushes <laughs> as well. I just have so many brushes, you guys. Look at this. I know, all my little brushes. So it's just got slots and you can fit like as much as you need in there. And I still have some, look at this, I still have room. It's so crazy and it all fits perfectly. So everything's all laid out. Same, kind of like the brush folio, but it's nice and like, it's all my brushes so I can just kind of like put them away, you know? So Ziva's not trying to attack them. Cause the only downside to the brush folio is that it's always on display. So if I keep my brushes in it the whole time, the cat will come in and steal them and run away. If you're like obsessed with makeup and you have a crap ton of brushes and you need to like somewhere to put them, this is great for you. Or if you're obviously a professional makeup artist, then I mean like having this book and you can use it for, like I said, with the brush folio, same thing, eyeliners, lip liners, that kind of whatever is long and flat and thin. <sighs> yeah, it's fantastic. I love it so much. <laughs> I was having such a hard time storing all of my brushes and then they sent this and I was like, yes. So super fave. All right, guys, so those are all of my favorites for 2017. It was really difficult, honestly, to pick because I feel like I'm missing things and then I didn't want to have a ton of stuff, so I kind of like left some things out or just pushed them to the side and then, I don't know, it was hard. It's hard every year. It's hard to judge things. Please let me know in the comments down below what your favorites were for 2017 and hopefully I have a feeling there's gonna be some really good products coming out in 2018. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. All of that stuff is listed down below. I think that's all I have to say. All right guys, again, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next one.